Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's the third part of the AI series and I'm really excited because we get to add animations to our nav mesh agents. We're going to bring in a 3D model from the Unity Asset Store, a free one, so everyone can use it. It comes with animations and all that kind of stuff, so we're going to set up our own controller with the animations we want to use and hook those up to the nav mesh agent state. There's two ways that you can drive animations with a nav mesh agent. The one we're going to be covering today, we take the nav mesh agent state and use that to set the animator state. You can do it the other way, but I find this way is easier, but it does come with a drawback that if your animation speed is not in sync with your nav mesh agent speed, your feet will kind of slide. So that's one thing to be aware of. I do find this way is more simple to get set up and to get working. Since this is part three, if you haven't seen part one and two, go back, check them out. There's a card up here, I hope I'm pointing to the right side this time, that sends you back to the previous one because that's where we set up the scene that we're gonna use, where we added the nav mesh links, where we set up the nav mesh agents, and where we set up the nav mesh surfaces. So please, if you, if you don't know what any of that is, go back, check them out. And as always, this code is available on GitHub. Everything that I've done here, minus Unichan model, you have to import that yourself, is in the project. There's part one, part two, part three, all in separate project folders. And each of those project folders is the end state of this tutorial. So if you open up the third folder, that'll set you up with the end of this tutorial so you can see exactly where we are. If you open up the second folder, you can follow along with what we're going to do on this one. Let's get started. Since I don't have a 3D model to give you, what we're going to use is the Unity Chan model from the Asset Store. So you just open up the Asset Store, search for a Unity Chan, and get this free one. That'll get you the exact same thing that we're using here. It comes with animations, it comes with a model, and some other cool stuff. So we're just going to use this one find the Unichan dynamic model, and we'll bring that into our scene, put it as a child of the player. And then we can get rid of our old model. So we'll remove the mesh render and the mesh filter from the player. We'll reset the scale to be 111 instead of 0 0.51, 0 0.5. Because the Unity Chan model has the pivot point set at her feet and not the center of her model, like the capsule did, we'll change the base offset of the nav mesh agent to be zero. We'll remove a bunch of the scripts that don't do anything for us. We'll just keep the spring manager and the random wind. And we'll create our own animator controller so we have only the animations that we care about. And we'll name that player controller. If we again go into the Unity Chan package folder structure, we can find art animations. And there's a bunch of animations here. The ones we're going to use are jump, wait, 0, 0, and run, 0, 0, F. We'll set it up where the idle is the default state. The idle can go to run. We can go from run back to idle. And we'll make any state go to jump so that way it's easier to manage that whenever we make our controller more complex. We'll have it where the jump can go to run and walk. To manage state transitions, we'll add a Boolean parameter that we'll call is moving. And we'll make a trigger called jump. We'll add the conditions to these transitions. The any state will go to jump when the trigger jump happens. Jump will go to run or idle based on the is moving parameter. Wait will go to run when is moving is true and run will go to wait when is moving is false. Then if we select the Unichan dynamic prefab under the player, we'll change the controller to be our new player controller. Now let's set up the player movement script to control the animator based on the nav mesh agent state. Since we're trying to control an animator, I will add a private animator and I'll call it animator and I'll serialize that field so I can assign it in the inspector. Then in the update function, I'll do animator.setBool and here I'm going to use the string is walking, which you might notice is not what I called the parameter in the animator. I'm going to go back and change the is moving parameter to is walking. It's important that these align, otherwise you'll get errors saying that the parameter name that you're trying to use doesn't exist. 
I'll add two private const strings. One is walking and one jump, so I can refer to them in my update function. And I'll set that is walking bool to be if the agent velocity, the magnitude of that is greater than zero. You can just put zero though. The velocity magnitude is always slightly greater than zero. So I'm putting 0.01F here instead. But what about the jump? Our player movement script doesn't know anything about whether the agent is jumping or not. That's managed in the agent link mover. So we'll open the agent link mover and we'll get a callback whenever the agent starts trying to jump and whenever they complete a jump. And we'll do that by adding a public delegate void link event. And I'll create two link event fields, one called on link start and one called on link end. And what we'll do in the main start coroutine, we'll call on link start if the agent is on a nav mesh link. And then after any of the coroutines done and we complete the off mesh link, we will call on link end. If you're not familiar with this question mark dot syntax, that allows us to inline check if on link start is not equal to null and then invoke it. If we go back to the player movement script, we require the type of agent link mover and we'll assign that on awake just as we did the nav mesh agent with link mover equals git component agent link mover. Then we'll add the delegate function on link start to be handle link start. And in there, we'll just set the animator trigger to jump. Actually, what we'll do is we'll add a new trigger called landed and we'll set that on link end just so that way we show the whole thing on link start on link end. Since we're using the same animator controller for both the player and the enemy, we're going to have a lot of copy paste code here to manage the animator in the same way. So I'll copy both of these delegate functions, the handle link start and handle link end. I'll copy all of those constants as well. I'll add that the enemy movement also requires a type of agent link mover and assign that on awake as well with the private agent link mover link mover and then assigning that on awake with link mover equals git component agent link mover. Then also on awake, we'll assign those two delegate functions on link start and on link end. We'll also add the reference to the animator with private animator animator, and we'll serialize that field. And the last thing to do before we can start testing and hooking it up in the inspector is on update, we'll assign the is walking parameter to the animator based on the exact same condition if agent velocity magnitude is greater than 0.01F. If we head back over to the Unity editor, Select our player object, we'll hook up the animator. The animator's on the Unity Channel Dynamic game object, so we'll hook that up by dragging the, the Unity Channel Dynamic to our player's player movement script, and the same thing for the enemy. We'll also come back and add the landed trigger to the animator, and we'll rename the parameter is moving to is walking, since that's the string we're using in our scripts. Now let's clean up the transitions a little bit. Jump probably doesn't need to go to idle at all, since the agent will always be traversing a nav mesh link whenever they're doing a jump meaning they will always be moving. In the transition back to run, I will make that happen only after we've received the landed trigger instead of based on some time. Since we've configured our player correctly and our enemy is gonna behave almost the exact same way, let's copy paste our Unity Chan dynamic model parent it under the enemy. We'll select the enemy, we'll reset the transform, we'll remove the mesh render and mesh filter from the enemy and reconfigure the nav mesh agent to have the base offset of zero and the capsule collider to be centered at position Y1. If I then click play and make our player move around, we'll see she jumps, lands, and then goes to idle. Of course, this is only the basic implementation of some animations with nav mesh agents. We didn't cover multi-states, we didn't cover blend trees, anything like that. There's a lot more that can go into this, but this will get you started with your animations on your nav mesh agent. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video, and I hope you understand how to tie the nav mesh agent state to the animator state. In the next video, what we're going to do is start dynamically spawning enemies into our scene. It's really cool, and I can't wait to share that with you. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you've implemented this into your game as a result of watching this video, drop a comment down below. 
and I'll see you on the next video.